this morning the pitiful sight of Palestinians leaving northern Gaza in a hurry after the latest Israeli army order to evacuate. Hamas had told them not to move, and even the Americans say they're worried these people are being driven from their homes for good. But the Israelis stand accused of stopping food from reaching northern Gaza for the last 12 days. So the calculation is changing. Better risk being shot on the journey south than stay and starve here. We don't know where to go, says this woman. We will sleep in the street and we're so tired. We don't have a shekel to buy anything to eat, says this man. Though he doesn't blame the Israelis, but Hamas for holding hostages. The Israeli army wants these Palestinians to head for a so-called humanitarian zone further south, though they frequently bombed the area and conditions have been described as catastrophic by American diplomats. This morning, a UN team arrived in the Jabalia refugee camp to escort those with complex medical conditions to other Palestinian hospitals, including this boy who's being transferred from intensive care. Over 150 people have been killed in this area during the last week of fighting. Though the Israelis say dozens of Hamas militants are now dead, this is their third ground offensive here. The hospital's medical director is still refusing to obey an Israeli order to evacuate the whole building. Because although some of his patients are leaving under UN protection, others are quickly taking their place. Including these survivors of another airstrike this afternoon. This boy's brother was killed. And the more scenes like this, the more likely it is that the 400,000 Palestinians, the UN reckons still live in northern Gaza, will decide that it's time to take their chances and go. With so many now obeying Israeli orders, the plan is to separate Hamas from the civilians it hides behind so that it can then be bombed or starved into defeat. But as for what will happen to these people, nobody really knows. <laughs> We've been displaced 11 times, says this woman. That's every month since this war began. So this is just their latest hunt for the bare necessities of life and somewhere safe to sleep tonight. Well, in Lebanon, Israeli attacks have killed nine people in two villages, one south of Beirut and one to the north. This after a fifth UN peacekeeper was injured when their headquarters were hit again by the Israelis. Let's get more from our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, in Beirut. Lindsay. Matt, just as you were saying that the Israeli military is giving evacuation orders in Gaza, they're doing the same here. They put out a statement today telling Lebanese to leave another 23 villages in southern Lebanon. They do that because they want a free fire zone. In fact, most civilians have left, and many Hamas, many Hezbollah rather, have left as well. But what the Israelis want to do is they're looking for what they call terrorist infrastructure. They're looking for tunnels. They're looking for arms dumps. What's also noticeable today is that Israeli attacks have taken place all over Lebanon, including in several places to the north of Beirut. Now, why is that? It suggests that the Israelis are tracking members and leaders of Hezbollah who have now dispersed throughout the country. They have left southern Lebanon and they are just in the mountains and hills, in the villages and in the towns. That obviously makes it extremely dangerous for ordinary Lebanese people who may dislike both Israel and Hezbollah. But what's also very apparent is that the Lebanese state, the government, the MPs, the police, the military, are powerless to do anything about it. At the site of Thursday's Israeli attack in central Beirut, a visitor today, the Speaker of the Iranian Parliament, escorted through the gaggle of cameras by Hezbollah, which, he said, has Iran's full support. 
I'm carrying a message from the Supreme Leader for the Lebanese people with assurances that in these difficult conditions the Islamic Republic of Iran will stand with Lebanon's nation and government and the resistance in all areas. And that, according to Lebanon's Christian politicians meeting north of Beirut today, is what got the country into this mess. Hezbollah acting on behalf of Iran, not of Lebanon, and provoking Israel. We blame Hezbollah fully. I mean, uh, we, w we would not be in this situation if they hadn't uh, declared the support for, uh, for Gaza and the, uh, to begin with. And despite all the uh, warnings and uh, advice that we gave everyone with regards to uh, this uh, unwanted war, uh, they went ahead with it, and uh, this is what we see, the consequences today. It's devastating. May Shidiak was blown up by a car bomb 20 years ago after she criticized Hezbollah and Syria. The situation that Lebanon is in now, to what extent do you blame Hezbollah for that? Knowing my personal history, I consider that uh, Hezbollah is the first one to be blamed for what happened. They miscalculated their decision to take part in the war uh, uh, that uh, started in Gaza, so, uh, and they paid the, a very big price. I don't know if they were uh, expecting the price to be that high. Uh, we would have rather uh, stayed away of it because uh, it was their own decision. They didn't uh, uh, consult anyone about it. Today's meeting of the biggest Christian party could never solve the central problem. For years, Lebanon's fractious political factions have failed to create an effective government, leaving Hezbollah to become a state within a state. Today, Israel launched more airstrikes across the country, while Hezbollah continues to fire rockets across the border. Lebanon's weak government and army can do nothing to stop either of them.